How to politely decline a photography job. Have you ever started talking to a potential photography client and you realize you're not a good fit, but you're not sure how to say no? I'm gonna tell you exactly how to decline any photography job without being mean or rude. I've been using this technique for years and it works every time. So watch till the end, you are not gonna wanna miss this one. It's showtime. Hello, I'm Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California, and I love working with amazing clients who are a good fit for me and not working with anyone else. That's the magic of what we do. I know who I want to serve and I feel like I've done a pretty darn good job through my marketing, my branding, all of my content, speaking to a very specific audience. So hopefully the people who aren't a good fit don't even reach out in the first place. But if they do, I have a great screening process that doesn't feel like a screening process. And I'm going to share an important part of that with you right now. So when you get a client that doesn't feel like a good fit, and I really suggest that you practice saying that out loud, I work with clients who are a good fit because you need to be a good fit for them and they need to be a good fit for you, then you should work together. And if one of those things isn't vibing, then you should not work with them. So there's three stages to this. Setting clear boundaries, identifying red flags, and then saying no in a tactful, professional way. Let's talk about boundaries first. There are many things that we could go over. I could create a whole new channel on setting boundaries alone, but a couple of the big ones, time management. If somebody cancels at the last minute, what is your policy on that? If somebody shows up a half hour late, what is your policy on that? If somebody is screenshotting their proof gallery and sharing photos where they're not supposed to be, what's your policy on that? So telling people how to treat you and how to respect your business is an important part of being a business owner and just a human. You teach people how to treat you because you tolerate behavior. You can either tolerate good behavior or you can tolerate bad behavior, but either way, it's your decision and totally up to you. And that is freaking incredible because you're the one in control. So when you're setting boundaries, Contracts are invaluable. Also having consultation calls before you ever book a client. I don't take anyone's session fee until we've already talked on the phone because they need to know what they're responsible for, what I provide, what everything costs, what our timelines look like, everything. I don't want a client to call me up, book a session. I show up, we do the shoot and they're like, cool. So I get all the digitals, right? I'm like, no. Mm. Because I've talked about that. We've already gone over all this process. I like glorify. It's not even glorify. I, I tell them with excitement about the whole viewing process, the reveal when they get to see their photos, view all of my gorgeous albums and metal prints that we can hang on their wall. I walk them through all that from the very beginning so they know you're not just going to get a CD of images. Do computers even have CD-ROMs anymore? They know they're going to buy luxury products. So once we have the, the money conversation in the call, it's not a surprise that things cost money. Also, I don't want people to be surprised and be like, oh my gosh, this costs a lot more than the $300 I was expecting to spend. Because I told them in the beginning, this is what it costs to work with me. This is what you should plan to spend. Also with time, it's in my booking agreement and it's in our conversation when we book. If you got to reschedule, you have this many days to do so. This is what happens in certain windows of time. And if you don't show up, that's it. If you show up late, that cuts into your shoot time. With wardrobe, if all your stuff is wrinkled, you're going to have wrinkled stuff in your photos. I'll do what I can to steam them during the session, but I'm not going to extend your session because we had to steam or iron your clothes when you showed up. Things like that. You will teach people how to treat your business. As far as paying you and your the value of your time, that's really it. The value of you and your time. That's what you are deciding ahead of time. So walk through the process, somebody initially contacting you to the time when they've booked you a second time. Like love their first experience. They book you for a shoot six, 12 months later, every touch point in that window and write down what it would look like if everything went really, really smoothly. Things like client showed up well prepared. They were on time. My stylist was here on time. We had everything in the studio clean and ready to go. You'll start identifying those things and think, okay, in order to guarantee that, what do I have to do? And work backwards from there. That's how you set your boundaries. 
in order to guarantee this result that I will deliver for you, all of these things have to happen. That's all part of the experience. So now I don't compromise any of those things. I don't let people do their own hair and makeup. I don't let them just wear clothes out of the vault, which is my client closet. They need stuff that fits them. I don't have stuff for every single person on the planet. It's not feasible. I figured all this out. You can do the same. Everything that could go well requires something. What is that thing? Make it a non-negotiable and make sure you communicate that. All right. I know that answer was a little bit long. The next two are a bit shorter, but it was really important because you can't look for red flags and uphold your boundaries if you don't know what your boundaries are. It's that simple. So phase two, looking for red flags. When I'm speaking with clients on the phone, and I I can always spot them. The ones who hire me want to do this to transform their confidence. They want to feel good about themselves. They're going through some big change in life. They don't feel like they know who they are. They don't have an identity. They're not really stoked with that identity. Those clients, we're an amazing fit. Some of them are like, nah, yeah, I thought it'd be cool to do something fun like that. I don't know, whatever. You know, I got, I have some clothes. Usually photographers pay me. So, you know, if you want to give me a discount, that'd be, that'd be great. Like that, that is not my client. And when it happens, I know right away and I'm like, cool, I'm, I'm well prepared to handle this because of what I'm going to get into in the next point. So again, once you've set your boundaries, you can write down what compliance looks like and what compliance doesn't look like. Are they stoked for the fact that they get hair and makeup done by a professional because they probably haven't had it done maybe since their wedding? If they've ever been married or if they were a bridesmaid or something, most people don't. So this is a great opportunity. But if they start asking, well, what if I just do my own hair and makeup? That is not really the problem. They either want a discount on services or they're concerned they have specific needs, maybe from a skin condition or there's only one kind of product that works well with their hair and they know it's really hard for most people to find. Ask questions like, oh, well, just curious, why do you want to do your own hair and makeup when we provide this service for you? Then they're going to say something something about their hair, their skin, maybe their budget. That is how you get more information to figure out what the actual problem really is. Super important. Because if they just say, hey, I think I'm going to do my own hair and makeup. And you're like, no, we don't do that. No, you don't need the fire, just say it. That doesn't help anybody. And that's not a polite professional way to say no. Ask why. And you'll go from there. Maybe if they're like, well, what if I have to reschedule at the last minute? And I'm like, well, can I ask why you would need to reschedule your appointment? You know, if you're if you're already assuming you're going to have to reschedule, why is that? And they might be like, well, I don't know if I'm going to get childcare because something's happening that weekend and whatever. I'm like, oh, cool. Why don't we just pick a different day? And they're like, oh, yeah, let's just do that. This day works way better. I know I can guarantee it. Problem solved, right? But... If they're like, well, I don't know, things come up sometimes, you know, I just, I just want to have flexibility. That means they're not going to respect my time. And when I don't give them their retainer back, they're probably going to send me angry emails and leave a bad Yelp review, F Yelp. And I don't want to deal with that. I would rather identify those things in the beginning because I've set my boundaries so that I can get onto the third point of this video, which is how to politely say no. This disarms everybody in the best of ways. It is freaking magic. Write this down. Use it word for word. I don't think I'm going to be the best fit for you. I believe another photographer would do a better job with that. That's my answer. I mean, that's like 99% of of what I say to get out of any of these shoots where I feel like we're just not going to be a good fit. Because no one can argue that. That's not placing blame. That's not saying anyone is right or wrong. That's just saying we're not a good fit. Somebody else will be a better fit for you. Like you you can't argue with that. And if someone's like, no, but I really like your work. You're like, and I really appreciate that. I just don't feel that overall we're going to be the best fit for everything that needs to make this a magical experience. There you go. It's that simple. There are a few times when someone's like, you're just not in my budget anymore. So I'll say, I totally understand. If anything changes in the future, you know where to find me. Or if the availability isn't right, or if they say, you know, my anniversary is in four days. Can I have my album back before then? I'm like, I won't even have your shoot done in four days, let alone the reveal, you know, the editing, the reveal, and then ordering an album. I'll just tell people like, you know, that timeline's too short, won't be able to make it happen. If you need me in the future, you know where to find me. So if it is someone that you want to work with and just little things aren't right, like their budget or their schedule or something like that, if anything changes in the future, you know where to find me. And if they're just not a good fit, not someone you want to work with, I don't think I'm going to be the best fit for you. Another photographer will do a better job with that. Done. I can't, I wouldn't drop my mic anyway. I love this thing. Um, but 
figurative mic drop. All right, so there you go. This is how to politely say no to any photography client that you don't want to take. Number one, you got to identify your boundaries. Why don't you want to take somebody? You have to know what fits your workflow so you can guarantee an amazing experience for your client and then know what non-compliance looks like so you know what not to be flexible on. Point number two is identifying the red flags. When people start asking you questions, making comments on things, when their attitude is a certain way, what are they really getting at by saying those things? And if it's not a good fit, what do you say? And just to recap the two magical phrases, if anything changes in the future, you know where to find me. And I don't think I'm the best fit for you. Another photographer will do a better job with that. And there you go. If you want to know more about scaling your business to six figures, which this video is a huge part of that process, because for every client you say no to that's a bad fit, you are opening up your time and your energy and your studio to someone who is an amazing fit and would love to just throw handfuls of money at you. Go check out that video. I'll link it below, how to scale your business to six figures. And if you want a step-by-step walkthrough of everything you need to run a photography business and make money and quit that nine to five, then head to boudoirguild.com and join the membership site there where I can walk you through everything start to finish. You are amazing. I'll see you inside.